language. This is where that really comes into play. And flexion of the shoulder, horizontal lady duction, flexion of the elbow. That gets me here. Internally rotating, that's Hawkins Kennedy. So you have to know these, you have to know this language really well now. So when we're talking about the crank test, the shoulder is 160 degrees of abduction. That's up here like this. I don't think it, uh, I don't think I, I made much of a, uh, an effort to write this down, but with this test, it's 160 degrees of abduction, but the shoulder is going to be back here a little bit more. So you can clear the forearm, clear the head with the forearm, so the patient doesn't do this. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a comfort part of the test. If they flex their head forward, it's fine. It's not going to change the test. So, do you want to do this on me since you're sitting right there? It kind of looks like you're, you're a volunteer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's good. So, the shoulder's going to be up here like this, 160 degrees. And usually I'll have the patient bring their arm up there. I just, you know, it, it gives me, if, if they can't, it's probably going to be a positive test here. But. So, right right there. And then I just flex the, the, uh, the, the elbow a little bit. So, it's better if the arm's back here. If it were right here, it wouldn't work that way. And then what I do is I stabilize the patient. Usually I stabilize this shoulder, sometimes like this. And what I want to do is I need to lean into the patient, and I'm going to push the humerus into the socket, and then grind. Oh. <laughs> does this hurt at all? Lots of butter. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it, it doesn't, this is not a problem if you have normal physiology or normal musculoskeletal system. So right <laughs> if we notice like clunking or cl like something's there that we're grinding over and what we could be grinding over is a little labral tear. We're going to talk a lot more about the labrum but if there's a flap that's torn off we might be grinding over it, and you get that kind of clunking or it's not like clicking because a lot of shoulders click when you move around and they pop and they click and that's totally normal in most shoulders. It's grinding over something not that you're hearing just a slight click. Why do they call it slap? Uh, SLAP is an acronym for superior labrum anterior posterior. It's a bucket handle tearing the labrum. So, we're going to go over that in, in lecture too. Uh, but you can just call it a labral tear. The most common one is a SLAP tear. So, would it elicit like a really sharp pain? Or, I mean, would it just be like, oh, that's really uncomfortable? It depends on the patient's experience. I mean, pain's always patient experience. It's really hard to say what they're going to notice. It's probably going to be more of an acute pain. But who knows? It could just be an achiness in there. It, pain is not the classic positive. It's pain with that feeling of that it's not just not smooth in there. Most of you, when you do this, I mean, you'll feel it. You can push in there. It's totally smooth. As long as you're not overcorrecting the shoulder somewhere, it should be totally fine. So 160 degrees, you're pushing down, pushing the humerus into the socket and doing this with it. It should be nice and smooth. We have, high, we have high lean cartilage. We're not grinding anything on, on anything else unless you have a shoulder that's really bad, or a labral tear. So then O'Brien's is, the patient's going to be in this position. So shoulder, flex 90 degrees, horizontal lady duct is about 10. Is that what it says in there, 10, like 10 to 20? 10 to 20. 10 to 20 is fine. <coughs> and so it's, it's going to be not midline, or not not straight sagittal plane, a little bit midline or sagittal plane, like that. And then we're going to start with the thumb down. So this is very much like, like the scapular plane empty cam position, but we're totally out of that scapular plane. So we're going to stress the labrum here, and then we're going to have the patient hold their arm up like that, and we're going to push down against resistance. Like an isometric contraction, so a decent amount of force. Do it at the elbow, don't do it at the wrist. It's a lot harder to hold this if you're doing it down here. you got to contract different muscles. Do it at the elbow. You'll have plenty of leverage there at the elbow. If you do it at the wrist, you might actually have a false positive because you're testing more muscles than joint. And then we do the same thing with palm up. That's all good. Palm up could be more AC joint. Although, if you have an acute AC joint problem, it's probably going to be painful in either of these positions. If you have a, an acute labral tear, it's probably going to be positive in either one of these. So, if you notice, I put down the original sensitivity and specificity numbers. They seem impressive. 
like a hundred percent sensitive, ninety nine percent specific, it's not that good. It's studied. It's been studied quite a few times, and one of, one of the reasons why it's also an AC joint test is because it's been found to not be as specific to the labrum. And the weird thing about the shoulder is, if you have a hot shoulder, an acute injury, no matter what it is, you're, all of these are going to be positive. <coughs> one might be more positive than the other, which might be a little bit of information. But I've had labral tears, I've had AC joint sprains, I've had um, uh, supraspinatus tears, and they, when, when interns checked my shoulder out, they were all positive. They all hurt. Even though, you know, one day I had a supraspinatus tear, the next day I had a, 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 the next day, a couple years later I had an AC joint. So, with O'Brien's, it's across the body like this, up and down. That might be a little bit more specific to the label because it loads things up. Palm up might be a little bit uh, more specific to AC joint and or labrum, depending on what's going on. Palm up stresses the bicep. The bicep actually has an attachment to the labrum. So it might actually pull on the labrum a little bit more there, but we're shortening it, so it's really hard to tell what's going on. So what matters most is location of the pain. If it's superficially and they can point to it, and it's right there, it's probably AC joint. If it's deep inside the joint, it's probably labrum. That's probably your best bet. And if you go with that, you're, you probably trust those uh, those stats. If if you try to elucidate other bits of information out of that, you're probably not going to be that good. And if you notice in the the uh, stats below, we don't even really have stats for labral tears. Uh, we have stats for subacromial impingement and su and uh, a full thickness rotator cuff tear of the supraspinatus. Those are probably the most common injuries in the shoulder. So, labral tears, we don't even know the prevalence. We might all be walking around with a labral tear. Or maybe everybody that has done a significant amount of overhead stuff has a labral tear. There are some orthopedists that think that way. Because it's like every baseball player they work on has a labral tear. Whether or not that's causing their shoulder pain, we don't even know. But some of them, they do surgery on it, kind of looked old. They didn't really look like something that happened yesterday. So, we know, we know a little bit more about subacromial impingement and rotator cuff tear, a little bit less about labral tear, but they could be problematic. Where else do we have a label? The knee? What's that? Is that your knee? Oh, I think you missed this. Hey, yeah, there's a labrum in the coxofemoral joint. And more of those are getting diagnosed now because there are more surgeons that can fix them. Back like 20 years ago, there was like two surgeons in the country that was comfortable fixing labral tears. So nobody ever diagnosed them. Now we're getting more labral tear diagnoses because uh, in the hip because uh, there are more surgeons in the hip. Just like there are a lot of elbow issues that are being diagnosed at a higher rate because there are more surgeons that are really good at, at elbow surgery. So, whereas 20 years ago, there was like maybe 10 that could do certain surgeries. Starting <coughs> uh, off baseball players and a whole bunch of surgeries. So, um, next time we will start with uh, O'Brien's.